We're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video, and we're going to write our very first jQuery code in this video. And we left off, of course, specifying our jQuery library in this script tag. Now what we're going to do, of course, is add our jQuery code, but we don't want to put our jQuery code inside of this script element. We want to actually create another script element where we can specify our jQuery code. And of course, we want it after we load the library, not before. Because remember, we want the web page to be loaded first and our jQuery library to be downloaded, and then we can go ahead and manipulate the DOM. You will remember in the JavaScript series, it's all about manipulating the DOM. And you will remember the DOM is just a tree, right? It's just a tree that represents our HTML document. And that's, of course, always what we are manipulating. So let's create a script element tag to hold our jQuery. And we'll just close it down here. And there we go. Now, before we actually write our jQuery code, I'm going to copy and paste a jQuery function in here. And there it is. It's called the ready function. Now, this is, acts more like a wrapper. We will put, from this point on, we will put all of our jQuery code inside this ready function that jQuery provides. Now, all this does is it basically waits until the web page is actually downloaded before any of our jQuery code is executed. And that's nice because, remember, we cannot manipulate the DOM until the DOM has been created. So that's why this jQuery ready function that jQuery provides is very nice to use. And like I said, you can just forget about this. You really don't have to remember anything else. The only thing you really have to remember is that we're going to put all of our jQuery code inside this function. And so that's all you need to know. So before we actually write our jQuery code, let's actually fire up the web page and see what it looks like. And you can see I've got three content areas, a left, a center and a right. If we stretch this out, they would be side by side. Okay, so now let's write our jQuery code. Now to call the jQuery library, you always start out with a dollar sign. That really just stands for the jQuery library. Now you could write out just jQuery. You could actually do that instead of writing the dollar sign, but that's not really how people do it. So you really just want to use the dollar sign. Now, once we specify this dollar sign, again, we are calling the jQuery library. And jQuery creates an object for us to use. You will remember objects from the JavaScript series. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this here. Now, this is the basic format. There's an open parenthesis, and we have either single quotes or double quotes in here. In this case, we're using double quotes. And then we just use a selector, in this case a CSS selector, to select whatever element or elements that we want to manipulate. It's that easy. So let's manipulate this right content area here first. So as you can see in the HTML, we gave it an ID and we called it right. So you will remember from the CSS series, we always specify a pound sign for that type of selector and then we can just put in right. It's that simple. Now, you will remember from the JavaScript series, remember all the code we had to do? We, we had to use the get element by ID method, and then we had to sign it to an, a variable, which of course was an object. That's all done right here. Look how easy that is. We simply put in our selector, and we've got our object. It's that easy. And so that's why jQuery at a fundamental level is so much easier to use than JavaScript. We can just use CSS selectors to select the elements that we want to manipulate. Now, you will remember in the JavaScript series, the dot allows us to access two main things from an object. You will remember there are properties and there are methods. And so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use our very first jQuery method, and that is the hide method. And you will remember that we use open parenthesis to specify a method, and then we close it with a semicolon. And so here is your very first jQuery method. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, if this works, our right content area now should disappear. Let's refresh the page, and it did. Take a look at that. Now, isn't that really amazing? Think about this. If we were doing JavaScript, we'd probably need at least three to four lines here to do all of this. Here, we're just doing this in one line. Isn't that amazing? And so you can see just how much easier jQuery is to use. Now, let's say we want to select another element. Let's select this div here with the center ID. Now, you'll remember in CSS to do that, we just put a comma, and then we can use another selector. And in this case, it's going to be pound center. So we'll go ahead and save this. We'll refresh our page. And now the center element is now gone. Now, if we were doing this in JavaScript, we'd have to do a whole slew of things to get both of these elements selected. But here, it's just as simple as adding the correct CSS selectors. So you can see how nice jQuery is to use. 
And really, at its basic level, jQuery is all about knowing the selectors to use and learning the methods and properties. Once you do that, you have about 90% of jQuery down. And so that's what we're going to spend a lot of time in this series doing. We're going to learn all the selectors. And by the way, it's not just about CSS selectors. There are selectors that jQuery provides to us that are not in CSS. So we have to learn those as well. And as I said, we need to learn the methods and properties. So that's the main thing we're going to be doing in this series. Okay, see you guys in the next video.